Hey guys and girls, this is Gordon Overkill, today with something different. You know, wait a second, wait a second. I got contacted by another YouTuber who also plays Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Not gonna tell you his name because I don't want my massive audience to go over to his channel and start a big shitstorm. But well, this guy plays an Octopod uh, Ice Elementalist 2. What a coincidence. He recorded an episode and this bonobo just forgot to check the microphone before. So due to a, 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 a bug on uh, open broadcaster software, he didn't record his whole commentary for his episode. What an idiot. <laughs> well, he sent me his file and he told me to probably comment his video and uh, give him a hint or two of what he could do better or <laughs> where he can improve. So he probably at some point reaches my immense level of uh, gameplay knowledge of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. So, well, let's uh, dive right into his adventures and see what his octopus does. Okay, he's also at layer 6. <laughs> Coincidence, even more. And uh, apparently he is wearing a stuff of cold, level 13 uh, frost mage. The stat increases look pretty decent to me. Put everything into intelligence. He is worshipping Sif Muna, which is a good god for a caster, and he has all the spellbooks from the starting spellbook, all the spells, as well as Blink. Blink is uh, always a nice escape option, so I think he should be pretty, doing pretty well. But take a look at that. Down here, he's got Statue Form. Statue Form is a very, very important spell, especially for Octopodes. It's a spell that uh, greatly increases your hit point pool, also your um, um, armor class gets really, really high if you turn into a statue. As a disadvantage, you can't wear body armor, but that doesn't matter for octopodes because they can't wear body armor anyways. Uh, the big negative point about the spell is that it uh, makes each of your actions cost 150% um, the usually the usual action points, so you get pretty slow. But you get immune to poison and you also get resistance to electricity. So you definitely want to get that spell online with your Octopult as quickly as possible. So this uh, mysterious uh, unknown YouTuber seems to be of the same opinion and he starts learning transmutations and earth magic so he can turn his octopode into a statue at one point. So YouTuber, start it, it's getting boring. You can't send my audience a video of your character just standing on the staircase and doing nothing. So um, apparently he starts right at the outer border of layer 6, which is not bad. At least he cannot get swarmed by enemies all that easily. And he lures this moccasin towards him with a, with a thrown rock and then kills him with a spell. So I think that's a good tactic. Um, usually when you play a caster you uh, want to avoid big uh, groups of enemies because otherwise you might run out of magic points. So uh, you lure them away one by one and uh, you can safely regenerate afterwards. Komodo dragons, that's the first tougher enemy. Oh, <laughs> see what he does. He wanted to cast Frozen Ramparts uh, against this Komodo Dragon, but he didn't know that Frozen Ramparts doesn't work inside forests. What an idiot. So <laughs> he better should have retreated earlier, but uh, luckily the Komodo Dragon gets slowed, and so he should be uh, an easy target. Elephants. We saw in our own last episode that elephants also uh, can be handled pretty well with uh, the starting spells of an Ice Elementalist. As soon as you get into a corner where the elephant cannot uh, shove you away anymore. Yak shouldn't should be a problem neither. He retreats into the corridor. That's uh, one thing that I uh, myself uh, uh, I needed some time to, to learn that to a level where I do it automatically to just retreat and uh, don't fight the enemies uh, right where I find them. But uh, Try that yourself. You will see it uh, makes uh, it it avoids lots of unnecessary deaths. 
the hailstorm spell is uh, the most effective if you use it against several enemies at once. So he doesn't use it right now when there was just one yuck in range. Rather he waited till there were two or three yucks inside his spell range and cast the spell. I think that's pretty decent. I would do the same. Oh, Sif Muna granted him a gift. That's excellent. These spell books uh, can be very, very helpful. And see down here, he got the absolute zero spell. Absolute Zero is uh, the highest level ice spell in the game. So of course he cannot cast it right now. I think he should be somewhere around ice magic 15 at the moment. He has to increase his ice magic a whole lot higher if we want to make use of that spell. But once this spell gets online, it's probably uh, one of the most broken spells in the game because it's just a one-shot spell. Pretty much every enemy in the single game just gets one shot by this spell. It's, it's just a single target, but... Uh, no matter against whom you fight, if you fight against a pen lord or whoever, you cast the spell, the enemy is dead and turns into an ice statue. So if he can get this spell online together with statue form, that will make this a uh, very, very, very strong octopod who will probably be hard to lose. So you might be wondering why didn't he learn the spell yet? It's a level 9 spell. It costs you 9 spell points to get the spell into your active spell book. And uh, it will take a long while until he can actually use it. So I think it's the correct decision to not learn it right now. Because there are other spells that he probably wants to get online earlier. Like Ozukobu's Refrigerator, which is a very, very strong spell itself. Talking about that, I... Uh, I played uh, two, uh, wait, I, I tell you that later. I think <laughs> our player just messed up the fight against this uh, Black Mamba and oh my God, he almost dies. 26 HP left, more than dire time to quaff a potion of curing. Now he tries to get away from the Mamba by swapping positions with his summons. Didn't really work, the Mamba is slowed, but uh, it's still got uh, next to the octopode, 20 HP, very dangerous, so he blinks away. That's the right decision. Uh, he doesn't want to stand right next to a black mamba with, uh, with just 20 HP. Now he was wondering how to finish the uh, mamba safely. He used the, the, the wand, of, uh, wand of ice, and I think that was a good choice. If he used acid, he could have missed the mamba. This was the, the safe call in this situation. There was anything I there was something I started to say, wasn't there? I completely forgot what it was. I hope it was not that uh, that important. Well, but what you can see is that uh, layer six is definitely by far the most dangerous layer level. That was the reason why I didn't want to do it at the end of the last episode where concentration went down a little bit. I'd rather. Uh, rather leave it for a for a, for a single uh, for, for 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 a new episode um, again you saw this octopode octopod making making use of blink to create some distance to a tough enemy again a uh, komodo dragon and uh, that's probably one of the reasons why Blink is such an amazing spell for casters. You don't want the enemies right next to you and uh, beating you in the face with their strong melee attacks while you just try to uh, cast your spells. Uh, you just don't have the HP pool, you don't have the armor class to do that. A fire crab. Fire crabs can do a lot of damage with their fiery uh, cloud spells, but... Uh, this octopode seems to have uh, at least one dot and fire resistance, so so he's rather safe. And uh, of course, being an ice elementalist, the fire crab takes more damage from him than uh, the other way around. Hydras. You saw in the last episode that uh, we recorded, uh, hydras are not that much of a problem. They are probably the most dangerous thing to encounter for certain melee characters that don't have the equipment you need, that don't have a flaming blade weapon or something like that. But uh, with the uh, Ice Elemental starting book, you are very well equipped against Hydras because you can kite them, you slow them once they get frozen, you can do a lot of damage with a, with a Hailstorm spell. But uh, this one will probably be more tricky. 
That's a Kartoffel a sluggish black buffalo. Its hide encrusted with dull scales. It carries its hawk-like head just above the ground, protected by a stiff mane of bristles. Its fearsome breath turns flesh into stone. And that's the big problem about Katoblepas, or however it is pronounced, their petrifying cloud. They can use it from maximum range. And if you keep standing in this crowd, f uh, in this cloud for more than one turn, you will get petrified. That means uh, you turn on the stone statue, which slightly increases your armor class, but uh, you cannot evade. Your shield skill goes down to zero, and whichever enemy is near you can just beat the living hell out of that statue. In order to avoid that, our mysterious crawl player makes use of ice beasts. He summons lots of ice beasts in hopes of uh, them doing the job, but uh, summons are always a bit tricky against them because they also get petrified. The petrified summon doesn't do a lot for you. So the Kartoblipas gets to melee range. One of the summons is already uh, petrified. You see here these little Z signs in the in the corner, and uh, they do a lot of damage in melee. Fifty percent HP down. That's the situation where I would blink. Let's see if our uh, our character thinks of it. Our player? No, he does not. He just retreats and uh, takes some unnecessary damage. He's still 50% HP, so he's not uh, that much in trouble. He summons some new ice beasts, and now the Katobi Pass is surrounded. It could work. It could probably work. Maybe one more hit. Yeah, and he did it. Katobi Pass down. I think that was a decent job. Uh, decent job, though I personally would rather have used uh, the Blink spell to play it a bit safer. He plays carefully, he doesn't want to auto-explore yet. Oh, what's that? That's the Obsidian Axe. Very strong weapon for most melee characters. Not so important for an uh, Octopode. The Obsidian Axe is a very strong, highly enchanted weapon, but it has a certain curse on it, which uh, means uh, once you start fighting and you see an enemy, you are not allowed to walk away from that enemy. You can just walk towards it. And that's something you never want with a caster. So uh, although it's a very, very strong, useful weapon, I think it's the correct choice to leave it on the ground. Therefore, just another Katobi pass appears. Our player thinks he can do it again the same way he did it last time, but as you see, it's a bit of a different layout. He doesn't manage to get his summons uh, past the Katobi pass, and so they always stand, they keep standing in the in the petrifying cloud and uh, they don't do anything. Oh no, dire elephants. Dire elephants are a lot stronger than normal elephants. They do a, a big lot of damage. So again, correct decision. Uh, our player retreats and uh, avoids this tough enemy for the moment. Maybe he tries to finish the rest of the foes first so he can concentrate on the dire elephant uh, just by its own. Hydras, as I told you, no problem. They get slowed by the frozen ramparts and then uh, you can just fight them to death without any risk at all. <coughs> sorry, sorry. This is also the standard tactic against elephants. Stand in the corner so they can uh, push you to the side. Uh, do a bit of damage over time. Ah, <laughs> and now we try to retreat to the step, but the uh, stairs, but the elephant just shoved him away. That's the problem with elephants. Uh, they can mess up your positioning if you let them get closer. And oh no, now the Katoblipas appears. So he has to deal with the elephant and the Katoblipas at once. But he tries to make this bad situation turn into his advantage. So he lures the elephants into the uh, petrifying uh, cloud takes the Kartoblipas back up with him. Ah, he's already down to probably 40% HP right now. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. As I told you, the Kartoblipas can uh, can uh, hit you with his cloud from uh, maximum range, as you see here. So blinking away was the correct choice this time. 36 HP. That's probably one third left. 28. That's not a lot. What a close situation. But he reaches the stairs and he's able to regenerate. Lucky him, lucky him. 
I'm not sure if, uh, was there a better solution for this uh, situation? Could he maybe have uh, run away from the Catoplipus? Probably not. The biggest part of uh, Layer 6 is still unidentified, uh, unexplored, and uh, it would have been too risky to teleport there. So, now the Catoplipus has to die. We cannot leave him uh, at your safe upstairs. Um, the idea was to use the file of floods to prevent the Catoplipus from using his, uh, his breath attack, but yeah, obviously it doesn't work. <laughs> So, lesson learned, mysterious player, I hope so at least. Don't use file of floods against Catoplipas. Just a waste of time. So, he summons and summons. Quite a big lot, blinks away from the Catoplipas. Again, the summons get uh, petrified. It doesn't really work, does it get anything else he could use? Ah yeah, that's an idea. Uh, Acid is uh, probably the strongest ward in the game. Acid does massive damage and there are very, very few em enemies resistant to Acid. Can't use it again though, because otherwise he would hit his own summon, which he for some reason doesn't want to do. In my eyes that makes no sense, because the summon is petrified anyways, it won't turn herb style, so he should have just continued using the, uh, the Acid scroll. What does he do instead? Hailstorm. Works too, but... Uh, <laughs> don't really get his thought in this situation. Well, since there are still the elephants at the one staircase, he uses another downstairs. And we've seen that more than once in uh, this episode already. Just the uh, ordinary tactic against elephants should work. He uh, puts up his armor one turn too late, so it takes a little damage, but there's uh, nothing to be too afraid of. This time the Black Mamba goes down quickly as well. Again, the standard elephant tactic. Uh, just to repeat it, um, the important point is to uh, um, get into a corner where the elephant cannot shove you backwards anymore. So, um, at this point, uh, lots of very dangerous enemies went already down. The Hydras, the Komodo Dragons, the Katoblipas. The only one of which we know who's still around is the, the Dire Elephant. So uh, now that uh, more than half of the level is already cleared, it's probably time to, uh, to engage the Dire Elephant. But, uh Maybe some more, some more um, chuff clearing first. Here is a dire elephant. There it is, and it has a yak as its support. The yak already saw the character. The dire elephant didn't. So uh, our player retreats around the corner. He wants to finish the yaks uh, without having to care about the tough dire elephant at the same time. Good decision, good decision. If you have to fight a very strong opponent in this game, it's a good idea. If you can manage to, then you want to fight it one on one. Now, yaks, we saw uh, some yaks already, they go down pretty quickly, but they can also do quite a lot of melee damage. So, especially when uh, fighting against yaks, you don't want that. Uh, you want them to be your only threat. You don't want them to do the bit of extra damage that uh, gets you into, into, into grave danger while fighting a stronger opponent. Oh, there's one more scroll that he found. It's a brand weapon scroll. Brand weapon might be useful on the trident or on the sling. The sling, of course. The sling turns into a plus five sl sl sling of freezing, which is a very nice weapon though it's a caster character. At one point he will just rely on his spells. I don't think that the sling will be so important in the for the remaining time of this run. Oh, <laughs> here's the dire elephant. The dire elephant can do up to 40 damage plus his 15 damage trunk attack, so he can do 55 points of damage in a single turn. That's a lot. You don't want to, uh, to uh, want to, um, want a close range uh, beat out with a dire elephant. So, what can you do? 
summon, summon, summon. That's the idea that our player has and that he uh, doesn't have for the first time. He is, he's making massive use of these summons uh, during most of the part of Lair that we saw so far. It doesn't really work because the elephant ignores the summons, but the player has a blink spell, so he blinks away. And he uh, tries to rely more on kiting now. He gets the elephant into the into the frozen ramparts. The damage is just too high. The elephant regenerates. He's at 50% HP right now. The player himself is at uh, down to just four points of mana, which is uh, pretty low. Though he almost got the elephant now. The elephant gets random energy. That's not good. He heavily hits him for one third of his HP. So the player has to blink away. Dire elephant has now su support from a wyvern. Wyvern are super super quick. You cannot outrun them. So he makes use of his wand. Tries it with a wand of ice now. Doesn't work. Wand of acid is the better choice. And the dire elephant goes down. Yeah, excellent. That was a strong opponent. Uh, never underestimate dire elephants. I lost lots of characters doing that myself. So this was probably the boss battle of uh, of layer six. If I remember correctly, this uh, layer six layout, there will still be some demons in the chamber at the end of this, uh, in the at the center of this forest, but. Uh, are they stronger than a dire elephant? I doubt it. I doubt it. The turquoise snail, they are usually no problem. You can easily kite them as long as you don't let them get to melee range and slow you and bite you. In that moment, a turquoise snail suddenly gets more dangerous than you expect it to be. That was sloppy playing. The player wanted to just finish it off quickly and uh, he really messed it up. It took a lot of damage. Luckily, the snail was on its own. So nobody could uh, capitalize on the slowed status, slowed debuff. Mm. Taking a look at this uh, rim break, it is uh, resistant to cold, but just ordinary resistance. That's not enough to survive against an ice elementalist. Here we see the first uh, messengers of the demonic end of this world. world. It was a hellhound. Going further through that corridor, here is a wizard, an eccentric person with all kinds of arcane oddities. And these wizards have sometimes got a spellbook with a banished spell. That is dangerous. Getting banished into the abyss would be... Uh, Big threat for each octopode, especially at this phase in the game. So the player uh, excluded the final vault and decides to first finish the rest of the level. Of course, he doesn't use his uh, armor spell, although he was in melee range with the black mamba. Nicely done. Sarcasm off. And now the wizard is the only thing that's uh, left. How to handle this guy? That's the question. The wizards don't see invisibility. So this might be the way to go. The player checks his equipment. Hopefully he remembers that he's got an invisibility potion. Checking his scrolls first. Nothing there that would help him. But apparently he's a slow reader. <laughs> Here are the potions. And as you can see, with the letter Q, there is the potion of invisibility. I think that's the way to go. So he opens the door, gets one step closer, and gets invisible. While the player is invisible, there's no chance for the wizard to banish him. So the fight should be a lot easier now. What are you waiting for? Just kill this guy. Hail storm, hail storm, wizard goes down. Uh, usually uh, that would uh, solve all the problems, but uh, knowing this vault, this wizard has already uh, done some magic and he has opened the gate of hell. Through this gate of hell, a couple of demons appeared and uh, these demons uh, are best fought uh, 
with great care one after another because uh, some of them uh, can do a ton of damage like this ice devil over there an ice devil in melee range very dangerous opponents also as you can see here the ice devil is immune to cold attacks which is uh, an additional problem for uh, an ice elementalist so how to handle this demon retreat armor up and summon now the ice element uh, ice demon uh, devil is surrounded the player changes to his venomous trident and attacks the devil from the second row from safe distance poisoning him, and i think soon finishing him off nice job i think that's the reason why he carries this trident around with him because sometimes you just have to fight these enemies against whom ice magic doesn't work directly another one he tries the same thing again but he takes a bad position this time he should have retreated a bit further to give his uh, summons more room to surround the, the ice devil it's got him surround anyways but no the devil kills one of the summons attack from the other side of the statue player runs out of magic so what can he do now luckily he is a follower of Sif Muna so he can use the channel ability to recharge his uh, magic batteries he tries the wand of flame now which is a bad idea I think the wand of flame with two points on evocation should not do too much damage Honestly, he should have known that. <laughs> he should have known that, but he didn't. Well, not everybody can be as uh, omniscient as us. Anyways, he goes to melee range and finds out, oh, I can constrict these ice devils with my mighty tentacles. So that's what he does. Constriction is a really strong tool in melee range because it uh, prohibits the enemies to dodge. So he's got a, a safe hit. So here's the boss fight. Uh, at least he manages to lure one of them out, one ice devil. And once again, this is a mistake I didn't see for the first time. Uh, the player just randomly blinks towards his enemies. Nobody has a clue why he does it. If I should guess, I would say that he uh, has got his uh, blink shortcut pretty close to another shortcut, maybe for his missile weapon or anything like that. And whenever he tries to throw a rock at uh, some opponent to make him aware of uh, where he is or to soften him up, he just misclicks uh, the wrong button and uh, accidentally uh, <laughs> randomly blinks around, which can totally mess up your run. I think this player should rethink his, uh, his shortcuts. That's probably not the best option. Anyways, here comes a Sun Demon. Sun Demons do a shit ton of damage. They are super quick, but luckily they are susceptible to fire, uh, to, uh, to cold, of course. So with his cold spells, he should also be able to kill this guy very, very quickly. And that's what he did. Almost did it, and the Sun Demon goes down. Perfect, perfect. One more Ice Devil, but we already know now how to handle them. Get your armor up, take your trident. Divine exegesis, you don't want to try that. Why would you want that? That won't help you at all. The only spell you could use it on is uh, statue form. Divine exegesis gives you a safe uh, casting on, uh, on any spell, but uh, he's got 55% failure rate on divine exegesis, which makes it pretty, uh, pretty, pretty useless at the moment. So the correct decision, now I do it, press P, press P, yeah, here is the trident again. His summons surround the devil, he poisons the devil, he constricts the devil, he takes some damage though, but that's uh, hard to avoid, fighting a tough enemy such as an ice devil. But all the other demons inside this room are not resistant or immune or anything to cold. So uh, the uh, ice spells work pretty well against them. 
And as you can see, as a consequence, these enemies are no problem. So what does we find in there? The jewel stuff and uh, 393 gold. That's quite a lot for a single stack. That's a, a big lot. Trying out the stuff. It's the stuff of fire. Not useful for this character. He will probably never learn fire spells. Also he drops the air stuff. The reason is that he uh, currently learns statue form and statue form will also make you resistant to electricity. So as soon as statue form gets castable, there's no reason to ca carry that wand around uh, this uh, stuff around anymore. So that's it. The end of layer six. No more good loot to pick up. So what's next? I think the character now has to return to the dungeon to finish up the remaining dun dungeon levels. But first he goes to layer two. Wait, 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 wait. What was this on layer two? A pack of yaks that he obviously forgot to fight. There's a black bear. He blinks away. He doesn't want to take any unnecessary risks. It's decently well played, I think. So I'm not quite sure if the second blinking was intentional. So, yak down, black bear down, another yak. Also down. Excellent. And oh, <laughs> what a good. Do you remember uh, during our last run there was a Manticore left behind on layer 2? And what a coincidence, this player has a Manticore on layer 2 as well. <laughs> but this Manticore is not a problem for, for a character strong as, uh, as this. XL14, the Manticore just explodes in the hailstorm. And our octopod, yeah, his octopode is back in the dungeon. Take a look at this dungeon level, D11. Couple of howler monkeys, that should be no problem. He just busts them away. But here is something invisible. As we didn't see anything getting invisible, it's probably an uh, invisible horror. So it's a good idea to cast uh, area of effect spells. And it's also a good idea in in close combat to use the freeze spell just on the on the square where we know that the enemies is. One of the good thing about frozen ramparts is, as you can see here, it shows you invisible enemies if they are right next to you. It, so it shows on which s uh, square they are standing. You still cannot use certain spells on them, but you can use area of effect spells, or you can just uh, blindly attack in that direction. Cyclops. A Cyclops can do up to, don't know how much, incredible damage with the thrown rocks, so you better play it safe against them. Summoning a couple of ice beasts is a good idea. Laying down the carpet of ice with frozen ramparts. And from then on, just hailstorming the Cyclops into the pandemonium. Well, this room is completely full of six yaks, a necrophage and jackals. So, better play it safe, retreat out, and use the most cowardly spells that you can think of. Ah, that's such an important point in general. Um, in a roguelike, you never want to fight fair. The game is not fair to you either. You have to fight as cowardly and as tricky and as cunning as humanly possible. The less risks you take, the better your chances to survive. As a drake, armors are usually uh, pretty uh, valid choices for caster characters, but uh, not for this one. It's an octopod. He will never wear armor. Against undead enemies like that uh, centaur zombie up there, you need some alternative means. They are all very resistant uh, to, uh, to cold, so you're usually fighting tactics don't work. Summoning is a good option, and uh, that's why in my eyes Summon Ice Beast is uh, such an important spell in the starting spellbook of the Ice Elementalist. Because that's your way of killing enemies which are resistant to cold. 
before, there are t actually spell books that uh, don't give you such an option, like the fire uh, elemental spell book. If you need uh, an enemy resistant to fire in the early game, you just cannot kill it. You have to avoid that enemy somehow that can get really, really dangerous and really, really hard for you to do. This is one of the reasons why I like the Ice Elementalist so much. He has got a means in his starting spellbook to deal with enemies resistant to cold. Yeah, and of course, in addition, the other spells are amazing as well. The free spell, which is melee range, but it is a, a, I think it is a smite spell. It cannot uh, miss once you cast it. Okay, wait a second. I will I will continue talking about the other spells later because seeing all these uh, fire enemies, it's clear that Asriel is near. Asriel, the fire djinn. So, Asriel does a lot of fire damage, but he is also susceptible su uh, susceptible to cold. So, I don't know if, if I would have done that. He uses the wand of ice blast, which is not that bad. But now he's got in range for uh, for hailstorm and Astrid goes down very quickly. The dangerous thing, if I saw that right, I think he had a scimitar of flaming plus four. That's a tough weapon. You don't want a guy with a scimitar of flaming plus four standing right next to you. Definitely important to. Uh, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, which spells did he get? Metabolic and glaciation, freezing cloud, simulacrum, and firestorm. Firestorm hmm, will never be. Uh, Casted by this character, I think, but maybe some of the others. Some ice magic. Nah. The one spell that uh, I would be waiting for if I was playing this character is another one. It's Ozuboku's uh, refrigerator. Ozukobu's refrigerator. Why can't I remember the name? Ozukobu. There's another spell book, but oh no! See there? The character got marked. He stepped on an alarm trap, probably. All the enemy did didn't really get it, it happened so quickly. So the correct play is of course to return to the next safe staircase, but ah, it comes an orc from the one side, a mantico from the other, a troll from the third. The troll and the mantico are down quickly, that's lucky, but the character is still barbed and marked. So what to do? You could try to randomly teleport in hopes of getting far enough away. He is at uh, a little more than 50% HP, 70% uh, HP. That's still, that's still enough, I think. It's a good idea to directly kill the Orc Priest, though, because you don't want to be uh, smitten in such a situation. Here comes an Orc Wizard. I think MR is still not high enough to be safe there. But the first Wand of Acid through all the Whites. I think that's fine. We could do that. Now probably hailstorm. There are two wizards inside. And for us to level up, of course. Intelligence increase. Good choice. Good choice. Another orc priest goes down to the hailstorm. Now we still got a brown ugly thing. Mm, so I think it's a good decision to uh, channel magic at that point. Uh, recharge the mana batteries. Just a brown ugly thing. Oh, it does damage. It does damage. Down to 40% HP. Good timing for a blink. And uh, Ice Blast from a distance finished the job. So, what about this spell book? Was it worth all the effort? It is a uh, Sif Muna's Handbook of the Twisted Snowflakes. It doesn't contain any spell that this character doesn't already know. That's quite a bummer. But there's another spell book. Young Poisoner's Handbook. Nah, not the spell book he was hoping for too. Just poison magic and this character will probably never cast a poison spell. Ah, wraiths and white ugly things. Both are pretty resistant to all the cold spells. So, what can you do to kill this wraith? Lure it around the corner, summon ice beasts, let them do the job, but somehow the ice beasts don't really do it. 
Actually, they get quite a beating up to this moment. Now they started hitting. Go Ice Beast, go Ice Beast, go. One more hit and the race is down. Very nice. Here comes the white ugly thing. And take a look at that. It is just resistant to cold. Not very resistant, not immune. So it is actually possible to kill a white ugly thing with frost magic. Which feels pretty good because white ugly things tend to kill players with uh, frost attacks. Now uh, turning it around, killing a white ugly thing with, uh, with ice feels a bit like justice. Cyan ugly thing. Which one was that? I, I don't exactly remember what the cyan guy did. I always I always tend to uh, to forget the the different uh, colors and their their meaning. Yeah, the red skin cloak. Usually that's a decent artifact, but uh, not for an octopod. You cannot wear cloaks anyways, so no reason to open this board. Don't do it. Don't do it. Dude, you're not really thinking about opening that vault. Why should you do that? For a cloak? And the red skin cloak? <laughs> Never ever come. Oh yeah, he runs away. Very good. D13. Absolute zero, still 100% failure rate. But usually I think you need to get uh, ice magic up to somewhere around 20, 21 until you uh, really get into a range where you can cast it without a ring of wizardry. At that point, I really hope that uh, our own character will reach the point where he can uh, cast Absolute Zero because it's such a fun spell. It's such a fun spell. <laughs> now that's some ordinary chef enemies here. Usually they should not be able to get a level 15 character into trouble. He's pretty low on magic though, so... Yeah, channel magic. Good decision. Uh, that's the advantage of Sif Muna. There are people who prefer the Humid, because the Humid increases your spell range and uh, it makes you regenerate while... Uh, when killing enemies, but uh, for prolonged fights, fights of attrition, I think that uh, Sif Muna is the better god. Yeah, the Tango Conjurer. Pretty uh, nasty little guy. He can bolt of magma, he can lightning bolt or venom bolt. All of them have one dangerous bolt spell. Venom bolt would probably be the most dangerous one for this character. But that was a magma bolt. That was definitely a magma bolt, yeah. So this is the fire variation of the conjurer. Best we turn around the corner, get all the spells up, and safely kill it. Oh, another Tango conjurer. But this one, <laughs> he didn't live long enough to show uh, show us the spell book. I saw a dangerous enemy enemy there. There's a boulder beetle. The boulder beetle. Rolls himself together into a boulder and then rolls towards you and does massive damage when it hits you. So you don't want that to happen. You don't want the boulder beetle to uh, to, uh, to get his, uh, his ramming attack done at you. Here it comes, the boulder beetle. It rolls towards the ice beast. Yeah, just, just a little bit of damage. Usually it should be more. So it starts rolling again, another ice beast. Meanwhile, being kited over the frozen ramparts, finally the boulder beetle goes down. Just remember, if you can stop the boulder beetles from uh, reaching you in melee range, do it. Nah, level 15 character has no need to be afraid of hornets anymore either. 
you saw in our last episode uh, that I polymorphed a Hornet because I was a bit afraid of getting uh, slowed or, or worse by it. But uh, at level 15, Hornets become pretty easy to handle. Uh, what I'm wondering is, uh, okay, yeah, he did it while he was still using his trident. The stuff of cold is in most situations the better option now. The whole centaur pack. Luckily, the octopode gets to melee range with the first centaur without being recognized. That's the advantage of having a good stealth spell, a uh, stealth skill. From that point on, it's just uh, pressing the right buttons, and the uh, the centaurs get completely destroyed. Ouch. That's one of the worst uh, layouts you can get. You're surrounded here by a Cyclops, by an Acid Drake, by uh, Uruk, Uruk the Unique Orc with Javelins, by a Centaur Warrior, and uh, there's also a Komodo Dragon and a Two-Headed Ogre. Together with Yaks and with lots of humans, this is definitely a... What are you doing? Why is he blocking the staircases from this direction? That was totally wrong. You don't want to get down. You want to get up. But uh, here, it's definitely, it, it would be suicide to go down this staircase again. So, absolutely correct decision, take the other staircase, which is pretty close to the, uh, to the ones that uh, were just left behind. But at least here he's got a chance to isolate some enemies. Luring up the wraiths one after another, killing them with the support of ice beasts, that's good. Luring up the human, that should be no problem. And now the Cyclops. How best handle this Cyclops? He can do a ton of damage, we know that. What was that? Why did he step north? I think that must have been a misclick too. Cyclops getting closer, doing damage, chance to polymorph him is too, is pretty low, but it works. The Cyclops turns into an elephant and of course the elephant throws our character down from the stairs. And that's the problem if you get an elephant. Now he has to somehow sneak past the two-headed ogre and he is kind of lucky to do it. Blinks, kills it from a safe distance. Okay, that was good. But this uh, two turns when he uh, sneaked past the ogre and went upstairs, it could have ended really badly. Again, the elephant messes up his uh, attempt to lure him upstairs. And now he finds himself surrounded oh, by, oh God, by ugly things, lots of ugly things and an effort. Situation getting worse and worse. So reads a scroll of fear, which at least for the moment um, solves the problem with a... Uh, the pack from the north. Still the Efreet is around, but an ordinary Efreet is not as strong as, as Ezreal was. Still he loses half his HP. Half his HP lost, uh, red ugly things still in melee range, that's not a nice situation to be in. So he return, retreats, down to 35 HP, now come on, retreat. You don't want to fight this at 35 HP. Very good. Back up the stairs, regeneration, and back down. The fight is reset. <laughs> and once again, the elephant does uh, his elephant thing. <laughs> I think our player has to find a way to kill the elephant. As long as the elephant is still around, he will not be able to uh, get any uh, decent stat ends done. As you can see, he tries a different uh, approach now. He uh, retreats into a corridor, kites the guys away. Okay, it's, it's risky. 
that's really risky. There could be another enemy coming from the other side and then we would have been in, in big trouble. Yeah. A coarse and lanky orc. Uruk lost her eye and... Oh, ah, damn, I missed that. Let's go a little bit back. Can I find that? Did I get back? Okay. I messed it up. Damn. You will learn more about Uruk in the next crawl run I play, uh, where Uruk uh, again occurs. <laughs> but not now. I don't want to click around too much in the in the in the in the timeline of the video. Anyways, at least this uh, corner down here seems to be secured now, and Uruk comes. So armor is up. Uruk does a lot of damage with the demon trident, but the character does more, and Uruk goes down. I don't have that much to complain about at the moment, apart from all these random blinks. Did you see that? He did it again. <laughs> he wanted to throw a rock, I'm pretty sure of that, and then he uh, just blinked randomly towards the enemy. <laughs> Do that in the wrong situation and it will completely destroy your run. Yeah, apart from that, I think that's pretty decent play at the moment. Uh, no mistakes, he plays it all safe, just the way you want to do it in a roguelike. So as you can see here, the rune walls are shorts and... Um, and uh, and the swamps, so the, I think it was swamp, yeah. So no spiders, and there's no reason to uh, have a want of poison anymore. No good reason, so he read the scroll of brand weapon on the on the trident, and it turned out uh, to turn into a trident of flaming. I can tell you right now that was a big mistake, what uh, the player just did, because uh, do you remember what kind of a weapon Uruk just dropped? It was a demon trident, plus two. A lot better than an ordinary trident. So why didn't he even pick that up and uh, brand it instead of still, uh, instead of rebranding the the ordinary trident? No reason to do so, I think. Well, statue pump is down to fifty six percent failure rate, so getting closer and closer to the point where it can be cast. And that will a big ch will be a big change. Once statue pump is up, the octopole actually actually becomes kind of tanky. The centaur warrior again, and these warriors don't mess around with them. Easily took 60% of the character's hit points. Don't mess around with the warriors. Sifuna dropped another spell book. It's one to be uh, to be checked soon. Seven horrible things. Pass wall. A passwall is a good spell. A passwall is a, a very good escape spell if you have to escape through a wall. And since it's at low failure chance already, that's a good pick. Do it. Take passwall. 1% failure chance passwall. You always want to learn it. I've got the feeling that most dangerous parts of the level are already done now. At least the very most dangerous part, which is the beginning with the downstairs. Here we've got kobolds and stuff like that. I think we c at this point of the game, kobolds can just be ignored. Soul Eater. Okay, that could be a bit tricky. Because this guy is resistant to cold. And it has uh, the Drain Life spell. So how do you want to kill it? The Soul Eater also gets assistance from an Afrit. So if possible, you want to get rid of uh, one of them quickly. So he casts his uh, Frozen Ramparts, summons a summon. The Soul Eater goes down to two-thirds of its HP. And it kills the summon. 
try it one more time. Still, it's still a two thirds HP. Now down to fifty percent, and almost full HP again. Yeah, this damn drain life spell from the Soul Eater. What should the player do? Tries to retreat, tries to retreat. The Soul Eater just keeps draining life. Small bits of health taken away from the player. He tries it again and again with Ice Beast, with Frozen Ramparts, which don't know if that even does anything. Does not. Little bit of damage. Consider the file of floods, which probably a bad idea too. MR is too high to do anything uh, like hexes or stuff. AC is pretty high. Uh, these guys are tanky. It's not easy to kill them. So a little uh, look into the spell book. Is there anything that could work? Yeah, summon lightning spire, maybe. Lightning spire does electricity damage. I don't think the solid is resistant to electricity. Yeah, that's an option. Could learn the lightning spire and see if it does the job. Irradiate is also an option. Conjuration transmutation. But Lightning Spire is probably the spell that prevents more utility. So the player retreats. Ah, oh, and take a look at that. Of course, the way to the stairs is not free now. Another Centaur Warrior appeared, blocking the way. Another human up here. And the annoying thing is uh, the player could probably kill... Oh, Centaur Warrior again. He could probably kill most of these enemies rather easily, but not with the Soul Eater right next to him at the same time. He wants to somehow divide the enemies so he can finish them off in small groups or one-on-one, -on -one ideally. Now he has learned Lightning Spire and uh, apparently uh, desperately tries to... Uh, get a target goal for this spell. Now he's got it. Air magic up to three, which makes Lightning Spire a bit more reliable. Should be enough. I don't think this character will become a real ice, uh, real air mage at any point. So the center is down, but the Soul Eater is back again. Any chance to kill the Soul Eater? <laughs> it must have been at least three or four minutes now where he's being chased by the Soul Eater. He cast uh, Lightning Spire. Oh, and from the other side, directly the Centaur Warrior appears. You don't want to kite Centaur Warriors. So, down to 50% HP. It's a bit frightening with the Centaur Warrior right behind you. Still got eight arrows in his uh, in his arsenal. So what the player tries now is to keep the other enemies between the center warrior and himself. So he can kill them from safe distance. One staircase higher. Okay, and that's a good decision. Since all the enemies were already seen on other rooms, he can now take the original staircases that he uh, excluded when he first entered this level. Here are just some, some easy enemies. You can finish them off without big trouble. And again, the Soul Eater. <laughs> yeah, what, do you, what do you think, guys, at this point in the game? <laughs> 
just pause the game and say what would you have done to kill the soul eater because it's getting ridiculous he just he isn't able to kill it again he runs away from the same one soul eater as if that was the most dangerous enemy in the game so what would you have done pause the game and uh, tell me in the comments what was your strategy against this soul eater who's again half life full life half life full life player makes no progress at all no that looks good the soul eater is pretty low now can you kill it oh trying to do it with spires doesn't really work soul eater gets higher centaur warrior appears think at this point oh my god oh that was damage that was damage some arrows heavily hit the character he's down to 50 percent hp and he is out of mana almost completely so retreats finds another centaur around the next corner somehow has to finish it off i guess but at first channel magic this amazing ability channel magic was helpful in so many situations already again he's an afrit but Efrit don't want to fight. Efrit don't want to fight against uh, Ice Elementalists. Plus four Scimitar of Flaming once again, and victory. Yeah, the problem is almost solved now, but uh, you know who's still around. nobody oh that looks pretty good no the player steps into a shaft trap and gets shafted right to d15 you don't want to get shafted to d15 so what he does he instantly reads a scroll of magic mapping and he finds out that luckily the place where he landed was very close to uh to an up staircase there's just one two-headed ogre protecting the stairs but this ogre never reached melee range so the player picks up his rocks again, picks up this potion of curing from the top and returns to d40. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it, Mr. Soul Eater, still alive and kicking. <laughs> and as it seems, our player still doesn't have any idea how to deal with this guy. What can you do against the soul leader? So annoying. The problem is he tries to with summons again and again and again, but the summons just die and the soul leader heals back up. Again, one third life, two thirds HP, one third, or oh nah, two fifths is now maybe. But the summons keep dying and the soul eater keeps eating, eating, eating. Yeah, that's a bit of suboptimal. Now he summoned a lightning spire right behind him. And that was the first situation where he made use of the passwall spell. Since he was uh, trapped between his own lightning spire and the soul eater, he just uh, walked through the wall to get to a safe position again. Necrophage should usually not be a problem, and it is not. But hey, <laughs> so leader. Player just checks if he got any more spells he could learn to deal with this super dangerous boss enemy, so leader guy. What does he do? There is another gargoyle appearing. Gargoyles have a strong range to take. But first he has to somehow kill the soul eater. So now what he does? Why doesn't he think about that earlier? He just melees him down, constricts him with his tentacles, 
and see the soul eater is done what a moron player what a, maybe i call him a, a bonobo or I, I call him a buffoon balloon or whatever it's a soul eater it's not that strong it's not like it eats your soul in one piece it just eats small bites and bites and bites and regenerates but it cannot take a lot of damage so uh, now finally he also remembers to pick up that demon trident i would have done that a lot earlier and well, I guess that means that he's done with that level. It doesn't seem like he wants to do anything more. He has cleared the sixth level of the lair. He has cleared the levels 11 to 14 of the dungeon. His character learned a couple of very helpful spells. He found the spells at least. He tries to get them on by now. And well, let's cross our fingers that this player will be able to win his run that he will be able to continue in a successful way. In the next episode, we will get back to our own run and see how our character continues with the rest of the dungeon, maybe orcs, and maybe already starts into the first rune branch. Until then, guys, thanks a lot for joining me today on this uh, little different episode. Let's hope uh, that won't happen too often for future episodes. Thanks a lot one more time for all the interaction we got with uh, with this video and the first. And I hope to see you all next time. Until then, bye everybody.